Today we're gonna to talk about how to make a solder joint. If you're an apprentice or a journeyman, are you allowed to make a solder joint at your company? I literally got a message from a plumber saying, our company does not let us solder. They will not even let them carry solder fittings on their truck. Now that blew my mind. I've been plumbing for over 42 years and learning to solder is one of the most important things I've ever learned and come back and built on from there. You learn to solder, you learn to braze, you learn to do different things. So today I'm gonna show you how to do an old school solder joint, but I'm also gonna show you how it compares to press fittings. I understand why press fittings and push to connect are becoming more popular, but today I'm gonna show you how to solder because I think it's that important. First of all, let's get some gloves and glasses on and we'll be ready to go. All right, so as you can see, well, that was easy. As you can see, we're out here in the shop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get two ends ready. We're gonna put them in the stand and we're gonna make a solder joint. So first I wanna prep the ends. What I wanna do is I wanna ream the inside and bevel the outside just a little bit, just to take off any burrs or anything like that. So I'm gonna start with reaming the inside. Now, I love having tools to make it easy. I wanna make sure there's no burrs on the outside that may push the flux out of the way. Now, what I do here is go ahead and clean the outside of the pipe. If your fitting brush has the wire mesh on it like that, I love it. I think this is fantastic. If you're old school, open mesh cloth works great. So I've got my pipe right where I want it. Now I'm gonna clean the inside of the fitting out. Again, a good fitting brush Man, makes your job so much easier. Now at this point, before I put it together, I'm gonna do two things. Number one, this is a slip fitting. I'm gonna look and see where I need to be. I know that I'll be able to look at it from the inside. I'm gonna go ahead and put my flux on the outside of the pipe and then on the inside of the fitting. Now, it does not take a lot. I'm just trying to get a little bit on there. I'm not trying to glob it in or anything like that. And then I'm gonna push it on my first side. Now, as you see, it slid all the way down. So I wanna pull it back to where I can see that I'm in the center. And once I get it there, I wanna go ahead and take a pair of channel locks and just crimp it just a hair. And I'm just doing that enough so that it won't slide anymore. That way, when I line up the other piece and push it in, now I know that they're both right in the center. At this point, I'm gonna take a cotton rag and just wipe down my joint. I don't want any extra flux, any extra soldering paste, you know, sticking out way down there because it makes it easy for the copper to run towards it. So I'm gonna get that cleaned up and ready to go. And then I'm gonna protect my work area. Now, hopefully I won't have any solder drip, but it's possible, but I wanna protect my area. If I was working under a cabinet in someone's home, I definitely wanna put something down to make sure I don't have a mess. Now, let's get the torch. Now again, this would be an overkill. So let's get a different torch. All right, so I'm going with my turbo torch today. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make this solder joint. We've already got it clean, we've already got it prepped, we've got it ready, so now let's do it. Now, I may do things a little bit different. If I've got something I think may move, I may heat up the pipe first because I want the pipe to swell. That way I know nothing moves. Then I'd move my heat to the coupling, put it right here in the middle because that's where I want my solder to be drawn to. So let's go ahead and make a solder joint. And when I think it's ready, I can apply my solder. Now I know that it's gonna be drawn to where the heat was. Now at this point, I'm come back and wipe my joint and I wipe it really easy. I'm not trying to move the copper. God, the other joint actually looked better.
So as you see, I cleaned it up a little bit, but making a solder joint takes a little bit of time. You've got to clean the outside of the pipe. You've got to clean the inside of the fittings. You have to bevel it. You have to ream it. It takes a little while to heat it up. Let your solder melt. Go in there, fill the joint completely, and then let it cool down before you test it. So I completely understand why the next way I'm going to show you is understandable because it saves you labor. So let's cut this apart and get ready. Now, the difference in this and a solder joint is on a solder joint, I would actually have to sand all this. Now, you don't have to clean the outside of it for a press fitting, but if there was a sticker there, if there's anything that I wanted to take off, I would definitely do that. So now, the press fitting is a nonstop too. I wanna make sure that I get this right and I don't have any flux on the pipe. So I'm gonna measure my overall length. It's two and a quarter. So I know I wanna come back one and an eighth inches on each piece of pipe to make sure that I have my fitting right where it goes. So I'm gonna mark one and an eighth on both sides. So now I'm gonna get to pull out one of my favorite new tools, the rigid RP-115 press tool. Now what I like about this, it's a mini. It's the smallest, lightweight press tool that there is. And this thing is nice because you can use a one-hand grip to get things done. Get it in position one-handed, open up your jaws, get it on, press it, go through the whole thing. I've got it set here and ready. I'm gonna go ahead and put my first side together and go right up to that mark. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here. And now that I'm in, I'm gonna center my fitting on those marks. I know that where I marked it, I now have this in right where I want it to be. Now, this has a 210 degree angle on rotation here. So I don't have to be perfectly lined up, perfectly square. I could get in a weird position, get in an overhead spot where I might not normally be able to get to something. I've got everything set where I want it. One hand operation, open it up, line it up, get it, and... The first half of the fitting is made. And the next one. Now remember, I started this off saying there are some companies out there that don't want their people to solder. And that really does just blow my mind. I understand that things like this are gonna save us money in the future. They're gonna save us labor on jobs, which is gonna make the plumbing companies more money. I get that. You've gotta know as a plumber, what's the best thing on your job? Now, if you're a plumber and you work for a company that will not allow you to solder, or if you're a plumber that works at one that will, what do you think about companies that won't allow you to solder? I'm an old school plumber, don't get me wrong, I understand that. I think solder is always gonna have a place in the plumbing industry. So, if you learn something here, I think that's wonderful. If not, and you need to learn to solder, you might work on that. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, helping you make more money in the trades.